Hello, and welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to Yoda Programming using Scala. This is our last video in the chapter on linked lists, and in this video we're going to write a linked list based queue. So just like in the last video, we took our stack and re-implemented the stack using a, uh, a linked list instead of an array to store things. Now we're going to do the same thing with a queue. Now of course the queue is fundamentally different from the stack in the sense that well, we add things at one end of the queue, we take them off at the other. And the question, once again, is do we need the full power of a doubly linked list or can we get by with a singly linked list? And to answer that, well, first we should say, can we do this with a singly linked list? So what do we need to do? Well, we need to have a front and a back of the queue. And the front of the queue, things will only be removed. And at the back of the queue, things will only be added. And the question is, can we pick the head and the tail to match those operations? So what can we do at the head? Well, we just saw with the stack, when we made the head the top of our stack, this end has the ability to both add and remove. Okay, so this could be the front or it could be the back. What about the tail? Well, as we discussed in the last video, on the tail, you can efficiently uh, add new elements. Okay, we had did that for our, our and our append method, but I can't efficiently remove methods from this side. So in other words, this cannot be the front, uh, or this cannot be the front of, of our queue because I can't take this off. It isn't easy to dequeue an element from, from this end. So I make the head into the front of our queue and the tail into the, the back of our queue, and we can use a singly linked list. So once again, we don't have to step up to the full doubly linked list. So let's go and let's put this in code. Once again, we're going to implement the trait that we wrote previously, in this case, the myQ trait. And I want to make a new class for a list queue. And the list queue will take a type parameter of A, and it will extend myQ of A. And we'll put in our methods here. Okay. Just like with the stack, I need to have a node class in here. And my node, uh, I'll start off with vals again. Our node class needs to have a val for the data, which is an A. And we also need to keep a next pointer, which is a node. Whereas our stack only needed a top, here we're going to have a var for the front, which is a node, and starts off as null, and a var for the back, which is a node, and also starts off as null. Okay, so what about these various methods here? It is empty. Well, how would we do this? Uh, it turns out that if either front or back is null, then is empty is going to uh, should return true. Normally, if front is back, uh, if front is null, back should also be null. Uh, so it really doesn't matter which one we pick. Now it turns out there is a subtle bug that you can introduce in a list-based queue if you aren't careful about this. So our peak. What does peak do? Well. Uh, peak is supposed to return the value that you would take off next, so the thing at the front. So this should return front.data. DQ needs to return the same value that we had uh, for front. So we want to remember this, val ret equals front.data. And then I'm going to return ret. And in between those two, I need to move front forward. So this actually looks exactly like what we had for the pop method. Front equals front dot next. Yeah. Because the front is pointing to the head of our list. And our last method here, in queue, should, uh, should add something to the back of, of the queue. So we're going to say that back dot next equals new node of the data that we're adding and turns out null uh, because it doesn't link to anything 
and back equals back dot next. Okay, we have an error. This is a real error. It's the fact that we're doing a reassignment to val. Turns out that while in the stack we're able to make both of these vals, in the queue we have to make the next pointer of var because we are changing it when we link something new onto the, the back of the queue. Okay, uh, so first glance this looks just fine. We should go ahead and we should test it. Okay, so what we'll do is we will make a new class for test list queue. And we can open our test array queue. And just like we did with our stack, I am going to copy out the entire contents of that and paste them over here and change the word array in its four occurrences to list. Note in both cases, I actually could have made this be my queue or my list uh, for all of the tests because it really shouldn't matter. It should pass either way. Oh, okay, so there we go. And I run my tests. Ah, okay. I was, I was actually hoping for the red bar because I know there are some errors in what we wrote. Um, so it's, it's good to see that we actually have them. Okay, so what went wrong? So let's find the first test that we have that fails. Oh wow, everything except for empty on create. Empty on create works. Empty after in queue does not. Okay, so uh, what happens? Well, it says null pointer exception when we try to in queue a five. So why is that? Close that off. What was it in the in queue that caused this to null pointer exception? Well, remember null pointer exception happens when you have a null to the left of a dot. Well, here's the thing that's to the left of a dot. Guess what? When you start off, your queue is empty and back is null. So we need a special case here. Uh, if back is null, then we need to do something a little bit different. Else, we're going to do this. If back is null, what do we need to do? Well, we actually set front to the new node of o comma null and set back equal to front. Because I just added one element, it's the only element that I have. And so now I am hoping that that will fix that particular error. Fix that error, in fact, not only does the non-empty after in queue work, the in queue dq 100 works, the in queue dq 3 works too. Okay, so this method, which just enqueues three things and then, and then pulls them off and they come back in the same order they went on, that works fine. So does the one down here, which enqueues a hundred things and, and pulls them off. But the one in the middle doesn't. Uh, the fact that this returns an error to us indicates that we wrote at least a reasonably good test here. Why does this not work? Okay, well, so what's happening? It enqueues three things and then it dequeues three things and then it checks for an is empty. And note that the error here is on this line. There was a null pointer exception on list queue right here. We did a DQ and it says front dot data. Hmm. Okay, so what's going on here? This is after, so we enqueue three things, we dequeue three things, it got to here, it then enqueued three more things without crashing, not necessarily correctly, but without crashing at least, and then as soon as it dequeued, it crashed. And it crashed with a null pointer exception on this line, which if you look at this line, hopefully it starts to jump out to you, oh, that means front's null, okay? So what happened there? Well, note that our check here for setting, so there, there, there are basically two things wrong with this, and it turns out we can fix either one. The real problem in some ways is the fact that when I dequeue the last element off of my queue, front gets set to null. Because when I take off the last element, its next is null, 
and so it sets front equal to null, and then we return a value. But that's a problem because when we come up here, we're only checking to see if back was null for doing this special case. So I wind up with an empty queue, but this check right here doesn't say it's empty, and so I don't do this special code. The best thing for me to do here is if front is null, set back to null. Okay, so when I DQ the last thing off and I null out the front, let's also do the same thing for back. And then we come up here, and we run it, and we pass all of our tests. Okay, so our list-based queue is a bit more, diff more complex than list-based stack. Then again, the array-based queue is also more complex than the array-based stack. We can pull up the code for our array-based queue and see that, sure enough, turns out that the length of the code for these two is very similar. Uh, this does, lacks the code for doing growing, uh, but it does include code for a special case here and down here uh, for, for handling things. Um, and it does have the overhead of it allocates a node every time, but it never has to do a large copy. So that is a comparison of an alternate way of storing that. Uh, and that's it for this video. And we'll see you again soon.